In this section, I will go over determining working capital needs and funding strategies. You should already be familiar with working capital before starting this video. Please take the time to look over working capital in introduction and the working capital cycle. In this video, we are going to look at calculating the working capital investment needed. We're also going to look at the key factors when determining working capital funding strategies. So let's begin. Calculating the working capital investment needed in an organisation. You already know that working capital is the lifeblood of an organisation. But how do you know what level of investment is needed? The level of working capital depends on the following. The length of the working capital cycle. The organisation's terms of trade. The organisation's policy on the level of investment in current assets. Such as inventory. And finally, the industry the company is in. The length of the working capital cycle. This is the time period between the organisation paying for its costs and receiving cash from its customers. These depend on the organisation's industry. The working capital cycle is explored in earlier videos. The longer this time period is, the higher the organisation's working capital investment will be. Organisations that have a long working capital cycle would be um, accountancy firms or construction companies. These organisations will have higher levels of current assets, such as cash, to enable them to keep up their daily operations. For example, it may take a construction firm a few years to get paid for a real estate development, but they will need to fund their staff salaries and the construction of the project in the meantime. So they will have to have high levels of cash to fund this. The organization's terms of trade. What does this mean? These are the terms the company offers to its customers. The length of credit terms will determine the length of the cash flow cycle. To reduce them, companies can offer discounts for early payment. Although companies can decide on their terms of business, often they must follow what their competitors are doing. For example, if an organization's competitors are offering 30 days credit, they will need to offer similar terms so as not to lose out on business. When deciding on their terms of business, organisations should calculate how much the proposed terms of business will cost them. For example, if the weighted average cost of capital of an organisation is 5% per annum and the average credit sale is $5,000, they offer their customers 60 days credit. The cost of this is $5,000 at 5% and then 60 over 365 days. This is $41.10. So the cost of financing these credit terms will be $41.10 for the average customer. Now companies could look at how long, how much it would cost them for say 30 days or 40 days and compare. Armed with this information, the organisation can evaluate different terms of trade and their cost benefit, i.e. the cost of financing them versus the potential sales lost by changing these terms. The more generous the terms of trade are, the higher the investment in working capital will be. This will be a trade-off for the organisation, as the more generous the terms of trade, the more attractive they are to customers, resulting in more sales. But they will have to fund these sales. The organisation's policy on the level of investment in current assets. This comes down to the organisation's attitude to risk. A company with a conservative attitude to risk will invest in current assets such as inventories and cash. This means that they can offer generous terms of business as they can keep their daily operations going while awaiting for customer payment. Some people think that investing in current assets 
in working capital is a waste as the excess could be invested to develop and grow the business. A more aggressive organisation will not invest as much in current assets and will be more profitable as a result. This is riskier as they can run out of inventory and lose customers or worse, run out of cash and get into a position of over trading. The industry the company is in. I've already touched upon this, but the level of working capital investment that is needed does depend on the industry the organisation is in. Going back to our construction company example, they may take years to get the sales from their customers. Compare this to a coffee shop. They are paid immediately by their customers and they can reduce their inventory investment by careful management. What are the key factors when determining working capital funding strategies? Here, you will look at permanent and fluctuating current assets, short and long-term finance, the matching principle, the costs and benefits of different funding policies, management's attitude to risk, previous funding decisions and organisation size. Permanent and fluctuating current assets. So what are these when they're at home? The normal level of investment needed to support a normal level of sales. If the company decides to expand and increase its sales, the core, this core level goes up. So if we take an example of a toy shop, the management should know month on month how much inventory, cash and other current assets they need to keep operations running smoothly. This is the permanent working capital investment needed. If the shop decides to expand and say open another shop or perhaps sell online, this increases the permanent current asset investment. The organisation will always need to have this amount invested. If not, they will negatively impact on their operations. Now, the same toy shop will have to increase its inventory levels at peak periods, such as Christmas. This increased investment in working capital is a normal part of business. And because this is not permanent, like the toy shop expects to have the inventory levels back to normal after the busy period, so say in January. The difference between a permanent and fluctuating investment is the time the investment is needed. The permanent current asset is in its name. It is permanent. Sometimes this can increase or decrease during the course of business, as you see with the toy shop. So when determining the level of working capital investment, the organisation must remember to take the fluctuating current assets into account. The cost and risk of short and long term finance. You should already be familiar with the concept of long and short term financing. In the context of working capital, sources of short term finance include trade creditors. When organisations buy from suppliers, usually they will not pay up front. Instead, they will receive the goods on credit and get paid after 30 days or whatever their supplier's terms of trade are. This is a free source of short-term finance. Sometimes organisations will offer discounts for early payment. For very big creditors, the organisations should measure these discounts against the cost of financing the working capital. Although this is a free source of finance, organisations should not abuse it as it will result in poor supplier relations and the reduction on credit terms. Bank overdrafts and short-term loans, which you should already be familiar with. Invoice discounting or invoice factoring, where an organisation can sell its accounts receivable to an invoice financing company for cash. They sell the invoices for less than the value and the difference is the financing company's fee. This is a good source of short-term finance as it doesn't affect the company's gearing levels. 
customers are also unaware that their bill has been factored. The organisation can also reduce their risk of bad debt, depending on the agreement with the factoring company. However, if the organisation has tight profit margins, the factoring cost may be too high. Long-term finance sources would be, say, loans, long-term loans of, say, over 20 years, mortgages, investors' funds and retained earnings. Short-term financing typically tends to be more expensive on an annual basis than long-term debt. However, this is because long-term finance is given by the investor or the lender on the basis of it being a long-term investment and they will receive a higher return over the long term. The asset being financed should be matched with a finance source. So long-term investments like a factory building should be matched with a long-term finance such as a 40-year mortgage. The benefits of this asset will occur over a long period of time and the finance source should match this. This is the matching principle. For example, the toy shop from earlier shouldn't use a 40-year long-term loan to fund its temporary increased inventory at Christmas time. This is a current asset that fluctuates, so a short term investment and the funds from it will be released in 30 to 90 days. So it should be funded with short term finance, for example, with trade credit, a bank overdraft, company credit card, etc. Also, a mixture of short term financing could be used, example, Toys Inc buys $100,000 of Christmas stock, which is delivered on the 1st of October. They are given 30 days trade credit. After 30 days, the 30th of October, they pay the supplier partially by credit card up to its $50,000 limit and partially by bank overdraft. Toys Inc has sold enough stock by mid-November to pay off half the debt. They pay their bank draft first as interest is charged per day of overdraft, whereas their credit card offers 60 days credit. By December, the organisation can pay off its credit card, but they don't. Instead, they use the available cash to generate more revenue or to pay their suppliers who offer high discounts for early payment. This is because they are maximising the 60 days free credit their credit card offers. At the end of 60 days, the end of December, Toys pays its credit card bill, avoiding the high interest charged by the credit card company. As you can see in this example, Toys Inc has maximised its sources of short term finance and the extra cash they received from selling their inventory and not having to pay their credit card immediately means that they used the cash to get discounts and take advantage of business opportunities. If Toys Incorporated had not matched their short-term inventory fluctuation, they would have been left paying loan repayments long after the need of the capital had passed. Often hefty penalties have to be paid if you want to exit long-term financial lending arrangements. This is to compensate the lender who is losing out on the returns over a long period of time. The permanent investment needed in working capital under the matching principle is matched by a long-term source of finance. This can be a little confusing as inventory etc are short-term or current assets. However, this consistent investment is long-term Although the inventory might change and the assets themselves may change, it is a long-term investment. Management's attitudes to risk. We've discussed various funding policies and each of their pros and cons. What an organisation selects depends on their attitude towards risk. An aggressive working capital policy is where the owners and management acting on their behalf will want high profits 
and growth and will manage their working capital in this way to maximise the capital so it can be invested into the business develop and development and growth. A matching working capital policy matches the cash flows of the organisation, resulting in a less risky position and it being less likely to run out of cash. This policy is the medium between an aggressive and conservative funding policy. However, in practice, it is not as easy to apply as some organisations may not have access to enough long or short term finance, so they cannot match their assets with their funding. A conservative policy would be adopted by risk adverse management. Shareholders who are risk adverse and want a steady, consistent dividend. So aggressive working capital policies that risk the organisation running out of cash and being unable to pay a dividend are not what they want. They will invest in working capital to ensure that this doesn't happen. Previous funding decisions. Have you ever heard of the phrase, once bitten, twice shy? This is where your past experience is affecting your current decisions. This is relevant in business and in life. Management's experience and history with funding will determine the current organisation's policy, whether it is an aggressive one or a conservative one. For example, if they ran into cash flow problems in the past, it is likely they will take active steps to ensure they have enough cash in the business. The size of the organisation will also factor into what funding policy an organisation selects. A smaller company will not have access to the same resources that a large multinational has. For example, they may not be able to get as much long-term finance from a bank or from their investors to fund their long-term capital need. This may force them to adopt aggressive working capital tactics and reducing investment in inventory and relying on trade credit. Try and apply what you have learnt to practice. What is the working capital policy in the organisation that you work in? What is your assumptions based on? Or what indicators of it do you see?